Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. We're going to start off in Massachusetts this week. And uh, Massachusetts is the only state left in lower New England, southern New England, where there's a demarcation line where stripers just won't go past. Uh, right now, they just don't seem to want to make that elbow, make that turn at, the, at Chatham down on the Cape. But the lower Cape and Falmouth into Buzzards Bay and then all the way to Rhode Island, there's schoolies. There's a few keepers, not many mixed in. But um, we're seeing striper action. It's, you know, it's springtime. It's time to go, man. Um, the most popular baits have been paddle tails big surprise uh, any small bait like a hoosie minnow or something like that on a light jig head fish real slow white pink chartreuse these are all the popular colors I talked to Greg from Red Top Sporting Goods and here's what he had to say he said mother nature doesn't seem to want to cooperate this spring lots of wind has been making things difficult for the boat crowd uh, this pack past week did provide a few days to get out if you had the right day off and those that got out were finally able to connect with some tog. The water's still on the colder side, so most of these tog were on the smaller side. Um, he said he also heard that there's some squid out there from the squid boats. They're in the usual spots, but that's a great sign. And it looks like there might be a break in the weather on Saturday, so if you've got the time, that's the day to get out there. I uh, said inside the canal, there's a lot of herring and even a decent number of pogies. They're kind of setting the table for the stripers when they arrive. Um, he's heard about schoolies, just like I was saying, on the Upper Cape and in parts of Buzzards Bay. No keepers yet, though. On the freshwater side, he said, the, things continue to, the, the ponds on the Cape continue to produce quality bass and trout. Uh, he said some of the shop staff have been hitting the trout ponds with their buddies. And they've been doing well at Little Pond, Mary's Pond, and Peter's Pond. Uh, they've had success throwing Rapala J5s. And he said, Henry Gorby, who's a friend of Red Top staffer, Tom P, got the biggest fish of the week, which is this beautiful brown trout. And he said, you know, you better get your yard work done now because things are about to get real interesting out on the Cape. And uh, I'd have to agree with him there. Thanks a lot, Greg. I always appreciate those reports. And thanks for the photo as well. Uh, Jason Colby from Little Sister Charters was singing the praises of the haddock fishing on the south shore of Boston. Uh, he said the doubles were common, and most of the fish were in that 20 to 24 inch pan size, perfect size. Uh, action was really fast and furious, having a great time out there. He said, however, the uh, flounder fishing still hasn't caught on. Uh, outside of Quincy there, where he usually does most of his bidding, he said the, uh, the bite just hasn't happened yet, and they needed another week or so for the water to warm up. But he's really looking forward to that, and thanks for that report, Jason. Uh, regular contributor to the report here, James Jukes, uh, sent me a really short and sweet report. He said that the trout fishing on the North Shore slowed down a bit this week. He said he expects that when uh, the water warms up like it has. He said they haven't seen their first schoolies yet, but a lot of guys are out there just uh, you know giving it a try and waiting, trying to be the first one to catch one. Uh, the shad fishing, though, has been phenomenal. He said he's caught fish almost every day this week, and it should only get better from here. He said it's just going to keep getting better throughout the first half of May and may continue to get better even into the end of May. Uh, thanks again for that report, Jim. I've been hearing a lot of good reports from Wachusett, but the funny thing is it hasn't been lake trout that have been the target species. It's been smallmouth bass. A lot of really nice smallmouth have been caught uh, over the last couple of weeks down there. I used to live up there, so I know a little bit about it. I know it can be intimidating to take on a pond of that size. And it's not a pond, that's a giant reservoir. That's an impoundment. Um, but the thing that always worked best for me was to target these deeper flats and anywhere where you have sand and rock kind of transitioning together. Um, and we gotta have to, you have to remember that Wachusett has a lead restriction, but if you can use those lead-free Ned rigs, you're going to do well on those. Uh, same thing with a jig with a uh, crawfish trailer on it. And then if my favorite bait to use uh, for smallmouth in there has always been a suspending jerk bait. If you hit those areas and put in your time and just keep moving around till you find fish, you got a good chance of getting a really nice fish because that place doesn't get a lot of pressure, especially the smallmouth, because no one can put a boat in there. Uh, it's definitely worth a try. Uh, I suggest going for it. Moving into Rhode Island, um, now stripers have spread throughout the state. I know I said last week that the West Wall kind of seemed like it had been skipped. I got some comments from readers saying that there actually had been fish there. I just hadn't heard that report yet. Um, 
but now there's no doubt look at this picture taken by my buddy John Lee you can see that the lineup is there everybody's out there trying to get their first school of the year and there's fish there uh, there's also fish at Napa tree there's been fish on some of the South, South County beaches um, over on Aquidneck Island the stories stayed about the same they're in the corners of the beaches there's some in the marinas now uh, but still these fish are really on the smaller side uh, the only place in Rhode Island where you're getting some bigger fish is up in Narragansett Bay uh, these fish are relating to the herring runs. If you've, uh, if you put in your time with some bigger plugs, uh, you've got a chance of getting a, at least a keeper-sized fish, maybe even going over 30 inches. Uh, but that's the only place where I'm hearing about any stripers of size right now in Rhode Island. I'm going to move into the tog fishery now. I talked to the best fisherman I know, Robbie Taylor, and he said that all the tog action that he's hearing about has been up inside the bay. Anyone fishing out front is getting not many fish and anything that they're getting is on the smaller side. But up in the bay, the bite's been consistent. There's some decent sized fish in there. And uh, that's the place to be if you're gonna fish on the mainland. Uh, the, the other place you can go is out to Block Island. Uh, and again, this week I got a picture from Wisecrack and Charters. You can see here, nice tog and a nice codfish. Uh, the bite's been really good out there. I'm still giving an edge to the tog out there. I've heard some fluctuating reports or conflicting reports about the cod fishing some people say it's been good some people say the fish are getting smaller uh, one thing that's definitely been a problem has been the weather uh, it's made it really rough out there and I've talked to a few guys who have just said that the drifts have been really hard and fishing anything but live bait has not been producing fish um, and something that I've been that's been really exciting to see is a sudden influx of weak fish into Narragansett Bay. I got pictures from John Speaker and his son Kai. Uh, these are their first weak fish of weak fish of the year. And I got a picture from uh, Woozy Fishing. This is Meg, and she's got a nice uh, weak fish here from the Upper Bay. Now it may seem early. Late April may seem early for weak fish, but it's really not. Um, I'm no weak fish expert, but the only ones that I've ever seen caught have been caught in late April. And um, you know, you'll, you'll see that bite continue into early May. Uh, after that, I don't really know what they do, but we'll just stick to the reports and see what happens. Um, and then for a little bit more information on those weak fish and some of the other things that are going on in the bay and even into southeastern mass, I'm going to throw it over to reader uh, TJ Kopecki. He sent me a video report. Take it away, TJ. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Nice to be back again. Uh, give me a little report for the uh, upper bay, Narragansett Bay and uh, some of the South Coast, Massachusetts, uh, into Malho Bay. Uh, I gotta tell you, things are starting to heat up right now with striped bass uh, moving up into the bay and uh, we're starting to see more and more people catching them. Um, I'm gonna be out there uh, next couple of nights uh, with this full moon that just passed, uh, trying some of the bridges up in Warren and Barrington and see if we can get some stripers up inside of there. Um, and uh, we'll definitely let you know what's going on with that. Uh, but all around the bay, around Aquidneck Island, uh, up through the Tiverton River Basin, I've seen reports of striped bass being caught. So the, they're moving in and they're following bait. And uh, I've also heard some reports of some pogies uh, being assaulted uh, up off of Barrington Beach uh, by some local cohorts that I'm, I'm very familiar with. And uh, they said uh, that they saw a couple of boils of uh, pogies all over the surface. So uh, that's another good sign. Uh, that there's like tons of bait, lots of stuff for them to forage on. Uh, and I know that water temperature hasn't quite got there yet, but um, I'm sure we're going to be by next week. Full-fledged stripers, schoolies everywhere. Uh, getting into weak fish. I've, I haven't even seen some reports, and I haven't seen a report of a weak fish this early in April. God knows since, I think my last time... The earliest I've caught one was like May 17th or 18th in the Coles River in Swansea. So, uh, hey, if you're out there fishing for stripers, you never know. Um, and, I, and I know pink's a hot color. If you're using you know, like a pink zoom fluke, uh, real light, they just like a very subtle movement on it. And uh, they, they bite real, real, real soft too. So, uh, hey, might score on one of those too. Um, the tug, been a little slow. Um, and, and I think that because of the weather, uh, lately, not many people are getting out. You know, the winds have been blowing on the weekends. And uh, the upcoming weekend actually looks pretty decent. Uh, still looks like northwest winds, 10 to 15 um, on Saturday and Sunday. But the temperatures will be in the 60s and the nighttime lows is going to be, you know, the upper 40s. Which is still going to, like, warm up that water a little bit up in the bay, yeah. 
So if you want to get out and uh, do some tatag fishing, uh, you can head over to Lucky Baits in Warren and pick up some crabs there. Uh, just make sure you call ahead, make sure they have, they sell out quick. Um, Manny is more than happy to answer that phone at any, any hour just to find out if he has any. So give him a call and you can also check them out on their social media page. They answer to that real quick too. Um, freshwater. Hey, freshwater has been really hot where I live. I live in Swansea here and specifically I've been fishing in Milford Pond and I've been going the old school style with a dauber and just shiners, live shiners. And we have been cleaning house. I've been fishing with my friend Blake and uh, both of us within the last two weeks have landed four to five pound bass consistently in that Milford Pond. Uh, so if you're doing some freshwater fishing, but it's not only the, the bass that we're catching, we're catching yellow perch, white perch, lots of chain pickerel, lots of crappies. And uh, I gotta tell you, it's been, it's been really hot in these ponds. But uh, I know those, those bass are going to get up and spawn soon. So, uh, geez, it's a good bet to get out in these ponds if you have a chance. Uh, trout fishing still good. Um, one of the good hot spots for some bigger fish this year I've seen has been Melville Pond in Portsmouth. So uh, if you have a chance and you're a trout fisherman and you want to get out there and do some trout fishing in the East Bay, head over to Melville Pond. Uh, you could also try Brick Brickyard Pond in Barrington. Uh, that's another good best bet. But, uh, hey, if you're out there, you know, let us know what's going on. Uh, tag us at thefisherman.com uh, or uh, get in touch with Dave and uh, we'll be happy to uh, share everything that's going on. So uh, tight lines and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks TJ for that report. Really appreciate those reports from readers. All right, moving over into Connecticut. But before we get started, I'm gonna throw it over to my predecessor, Toby Lipinski. He's got some exciting news from Black Hall Outfitters. Take it away, Toby. Thanks a lot, Dave. I am here today at Black Hall Outfitters as this weekend, that's Saturday and Sunday, May 1st and 2nd, is the big grand opening event for the brand new state-of-the-art destination retail facility located at 372 Boston Post Road in Westbrook, Connecticut. The new Black Hall Outfitters Timber Fishing Lodge is a state-of-the-art destination retail facility featuring, featuring two floors, over 4,000 square feet of all the top angling gear and accessories you could possibly want. This Westbrook location will serve as the episode for inshore, offshore, kayak, surf, fishing gear, everything you can need, I can just about guarantee is here. And it's also home to Wetmore's Marina, which is a state-of-the-art sportsman boating facility. Now you can finally come by and check it all out yourself this weekend. And the grand opening event runs each day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's free, open to the public, and there's gonna be a load of great clinics, presentations, and seminars from local captains, tackle reps, fishing experts, and more, with the likes of Captain Greg DeBrule, the Black Hawk, Captain Mike Roy of Real Cast Charters, world record blackfish holder Ken Westerfeld, Elliot Thompson of 24-7 Lures, and a bunch of others. Heck, I'm even doing a seminar on Saturday morning to kick things off on surf fishing at night. And of course, there's going to be a bunch of reps on hand from all of the best in the tackle industry. You guys from uh, Tsunami, Old Town Kayak, Shimano, Daiwa, Costa, Accurate, and a bunch more will be here with all of their products. And all of them are donating some stuff to the raffle. So be sure to sign up. You're going to get an opportunity to win a ton of great prizes from all these really cool fishing reps. Uh, of course, you can get all the deals right now at the fishing Com. And again, be sure to head on over to the Black Hall Outfitters Westbrook location, 372 Boston Post Road, this Saturday and Sunday, May 1st and 2nd, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks a lot, Toby. Really appreciate that. In Connecticut, the striper void is filling in. Um, I've been writing these reports for, the, for Connecticut for, geez, at least a decade now. And I always seem to notice that there's this little void that kind of opens up right off of Niantic Bay area. It seems like some fish are moving in from the west and then some more come in from the east and before long they're just kind of closing in and there's this one little void that just doesn't uh, doesn't have fish. Well that void is finally filled in. There's fish in Niantic Bay, there's fish in Niantic River, and there's fish at Black Point, all those areas now. So the stripers have pretty much invaded the entire coast of Connecticut. Um, but still the, the fishing is on the slower side right there in that void area. Uh, but something that people overlook a lot is that the area outside of the Thames is a little bit of a sleeper spot if you're looking to try to get a bigger fish. Um, the Thames isn't what it used to be as far as holdover striper fishing goes, but there are still holdover fish in there every year, and those fish have still got to come out. 
and this is the time of year when they're going to start to come out. So I remember just last year uh, we had a report of a big fish that was taken, I believe it was the first week of May or around the 10th or something like that, but that's early for a fish of that size and this fish was pushing 40 pounds. It was illegally kept, um, but it made its way into the reports and I mean that's, that's a good fish. Uh, typically these fish are not giants like that one, but uh, you, you've got a really good shot at getting a 30 inch fish and there's a lot of schoolies there. I mean even I talked to Karen from AW Marina and she said that there's been schoolies off their dock all week long. Um, the more reliable striper fishing though has been in the Connecticut River. Uh, I talked to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters and he said that they've been doing great there. There's been a lot of herring running up the river. They're seeing bass pushing herring on the surface. Uh, they've been getting some fish on top water, but the, their top taker has been the seven inch sluggo. They've been crushing fish on that. Um, he gave me a, a good picture here of uh, Fike, Chris Fike and his son uh, with a nice slot fish that they took just this week. I also got a nice, fi a nice picture from Nicole uh, by way of Fishing Factory 3 from upriver. And that's the other place where the fishing has been really... Uh, really good you know all the way up to Hartford uh, these people people are getting fish uh, bait has been dominating the the bite up there most guys are getting them on sandworms on a circle hook but they're taking soft plastics as, as well paddle tails and the like and the fishing all the way up there has been phenomenal as well it, as you head west from the Connecticut River all of the tidal estuaries now are going to have some stripers uh, either at the mouth or depending on the size of it if it's a larger river or something like that they're going to be up in there as well uh, again Mostly smaller fish, but the further west you go, the better shot. Your bet, the better your shot is at getting a bigger fish. And then, way west, uh, there's been some really nice fish. Some fish pushing 30 pounds coming out of the Hudson. I'm not going to talk too much about that, just because Max from Fisherman's World is going to fill us in on that. He's also going to fill us in on the fact that the lower Hoosie has been really good. Uh, but I have heard some good reports with some solid fish taken in the lower Hoosie from both shore boat and uh, spinning and fly tackle heads. It's all been working. Some really nice fish down there. Uh, I'm going to move over into the blackfish fishery now, which, as usual, is just starting to get good as the season is getting ready to close. So, as you should know, if you're a black fisherman, uh, the season closes on Friday. It doesn't open again until July 1st. Um, so, if you're going to get out there and make it happen, you got to make it happen now. Uh, I have been hearing about some fish in the eastern sound now. Latimer Reef, Sarah's Ledge, places like that. Uh, but the bulk of the fish we're hearing about are still coming from the walls. Um, it's either going to be Clinton, New Haven, or Duck Island. Those are, th you know, three popular walls that everybody talks about. But I want you to read between the lines of me a little bit here. These fish are relating to these big break, break walls. Do you think those are the only three that these fish are relating to in all of uh, Long Island Sound? I don't think so. Um, I think what's happening is a lot of other guys are just keeping it quiet, and wisely so. But if I were you... If I was going to go out and try to nail a tog and I wanted to get away from the crowds before the season closes on Friday, I would just get on Google Earth or get on my chart and just mark out a bunch of these break walls and just go fish them. Uh, these fish have got to be on all of them. Um, and th that would be my approach because I don't like fishing in a crowd. Uh, the other thing that we're hearing is that any fish that aren't being caught from these famous walls are coming from pretty shallow water. So don't be afraid to pick out some structure in 10 feet of water or even a little less than that. Uh, that's where these fish have been. And it's not just crabs. Luckily for us, since there's a little bit of a crab shortage, clams have been working great. And uh, they'll even take worms or squid strips in a pinch. So, you know, don't be afraid to experiment with uh, the type of bait that you're throwing. And I'm going to wrap it up uh, with some news about the shad fishing up in the Connecticut River. It's been great. Um, I've got a picture here from Aaron Swanson. This is a beautiful shad. I mean, look at the size of that thing. If you're going to go and do this and you haven't done it before, be ready because these things fight like crazy. They're almost like little freshwater albies. Um, and the key to it has been willow leaves. They've been the, the far and away top taker of shad right now. And from what I've been hearing, the secret is to just fish the right size drail. So you're getting that willow leaf all the way down to the bottom, just fishing it slowly right along the bottom in these deeper sections of the river with good moving water. And you've got a really good shot of hooking up. A lot of guys are getting multiple fish per day. There's been some, you know, some of the popular spots have been crowded because it's been so good. Uh, so again, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. Go find yourself a little deep run and see what you can get off on your own. Or, you know, hit Middletown, hit Cromwell, look for the big crowd of trucks and, you know, shoulder your way in and have a blast because these fish are awesome. 
Um, we're going to throw it over to Max from Fisherman's World now. He's going to give us a little synopsis of what's going on in the Western Sound. Take it away, Max. We got a lot going on this week locally. Striped bass fishing has really picked up. We got a lot of slot fish around. Schoolies are running our beaches, our harbors. And to the west, we got fish to 25 pounds so far down to the Throgs Neck Execution Rock area. Guys trolling umbrellas down there and mojos and spoons are picking up nicer fish. We should see those fish moving locally, hopefully on the backside of this moon. The mouth of the Housatonic is still holding fish for guys want to get in the surf and plug away. The early morning bite has been the best for the bigger fish and into the nighttime hours. Black fishing this week remains a little slow. Guys are catching a few keepers here and there, mostly on clams. And we look forward to the opening of fluke fishing. You're, earlier in the season, usually guys shoot across to Smithtown Bay and fluke all those beaches. Thank you and good luck to our anglers. And I'm going to wrap things up with some trout news. Uh, the trout fishing remains awesome in Connecticut. It just seems to be showing no signs of slowing. Um, everybody seems to be hyper-focused on the rivers, though. The Mill River, the Norwalk River, the Farmington, the Salmon River. Everybody's river, river, river. But I've been hearing a lot of good reports from some of the ponds and lakes in Connecticut, too. So don't neglect those. And if you go on Deep's website, you can kind of go down the list and look, and you'll see that some of them have got tiger trout in them. Some of them have got salmon in them. Some of them have got some big brook trout in them. And I haven't been hearing about a lot of those fish being caught. So chances are a lot of those ponds still have most of those fish in there. So it's worth it. It might be worth a ride to go hit some of these places and, you know, try to get a species you haven't caught before. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap things up with uh, some comments from readers that I got this week. Um, I had several people, or a handful of people, ask me to sort of expand on my herring run theories when it comes to stripers. They were surprised to hear me saying that I wanted, or that I was suggesting, uh, that people throw fast moving baits in the herring run. I suppose this probably tems, uh, I suppose this probably stems from the fact that most of the stories you read classically, you know, people are throwing a Danny plug or a red fin in a herring run and fishing slowly. And yeah, I've caught some fish in herring runs and Dannys and red fins. And I think, you know, what you're replicating there is just one of the exhausted spent herring that uh, just either isn't going to make it up the run or has done its deed and has come back out and is just kind of laying there ready to be swallowed by a bass. But you know, I like to apply logic to my fishing, uh, really any of the fishing that I do. And when you think about herring, they spend their whole lives offshore. They're constantly being chased by all manner of game fish and seals and whales and all kinds of stuff. And they're genetically programmed to, to come inshore and go up these rivers and spawn. So they're running a gauntlet coming inshore. They're, they're dealing with all different types of predators. And once they make it to that run, they start to get into shallow water. And my observation in all my fishing has been that, you know, when these herring get into shallow water, they stay shallow, but they move fast. And so when you take that into consideration, and then you think about the fact that when they come to the approach of a run, they're, they're in the home stretch, you know. So if they're, in, if they're in healthy condition, they're going for it. They're going to go fast. And then beyond that, if you're hearing... Uh, activity in the run, you're hearing some bass splashing around, you're hearing the herring kind of scattering, then you know that when they get there and there's predators uh, in the area, they're going to, they're going fast. They're going to speed up that run and they're going to try to get the heck out of there. Uh, so that's why I suggest fishing something like a magic swimmer and fishing it really fast or a, a larger finesse fish and fishing it fast. Put a big weight at the head and just crank it as fast as you can crank it that it stays on the surface without rolling up on its side. Um, Far and away, my best results at herring runs have come fishing faster baits. Uh, so that's why I recommend that. And, um, I mean, it really works. You guys should give it a try. Anyone who fishes herring runs, especially from shore, I mean, put those two baits in your bag. I bet you're going to hook up. And that wraps up the report for this week. Um, remember to click like and subscribe to the channel. Remember to click that little bell down there so you get a uh, notification whenever we post something new. And if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to come over to the website and check out what we've got to offer. We've got a lot going on over here at The Fisherman. We're at the beginning of an exciting season. This is my first season back in the, in the seat of the editor at Fisherman for 10 years. And, you know, I'm planning to make it a good one. So uh, come on over, check us out. And remember, just like I say every week, you can't catch these fish from the couch. you got to get out there. you got to make it happen on your own time. So I encourage you to do that. Get out there, chase your species of choice. 
and uh, you know don't waste these early spring days you only get these once a year and man they can be magic so good luck this week and i'll see you next week thanks a lot Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters serious english choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the northeast and mid-atlantic visit steigercraft.com for a dealer near you